And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Over the last couple years, Yellow's come out with a Tales and Game series for children and families. Volume 1, 2, and 3 in two of these three games have made it to my Children's Game of the Year award at the end of the year. They're great games. Now, they come out with Volume 4, which is The Grasshopper and the Ant. Just came out here. Two to four players. Play takes about 30 minutes to play. Ages eight and up. Uh, so we're going to be, one of us is going to be a grasshopper, jumping around trying to guess what the ants are doing as they're running in and out of the ant hill there. So let's take a look. It's sort of a guessing and bluffing game. Uh, let, is it as good as all the others? Is it better? Is it the worst one? Let's take a look. Just like all the other versions of the Tales and Games, when you open it up, it has the actual story of the grasshopper and the ant that you could read to your kid. And then after that, of course, we have the, the rules and the rest of the components. This game has two different modes, winter and autumn. I'm going to show you the autumn mode first. It's a little easier. And one player is going to start off as the grasshopper and take this. The, rest of, the other player is going to start as the ant and take all of these ant figures and these wooden discs. In the autumn mode, you draw a four by four grid of these squares, and there's four different types of sort of pads. So we have wood, we have the yellow, we have the blue, and we have the red. And in the scoreboard for this, we have the red, the brown, the blue, and the yellow here with different point values. What's gonna happen is the ant is going to place his ants in any line, as long as it doesn't fork off and can be one full line, he's gonna go like that. So that's just one big line like that. And actually, I'll put them down this way so you can see them better. And then after that's done, that player is going to take these tokens, and there's one token for each of the types of paths that are here, and they're going to put face down which one is the one that they've chosen. And so maybe let's say that player puts this, puts it just face down. After he puts it face down, the grasshopper has to guess which path did he choose. So let's say he says, I think he chose blue. Well, then this guy flips it up and goes, ha ha, you did not choose what I chose. I was actually picking the red. So the ant won this. So what would happen is uh, this would uh, just get discarded for what for now. And any of them that have an insect, you'd get to collect and put down face down in front of you. We'll talk about that later. Now, because there were two of those, and since that player moved two to the red, they go one, two. They're now at three points there for red. Now, since the ant player won, the ant would pass the ants to the player to the left. In this case, a two-player game would go to the other player, and that other player would become the grasshopper, and then two new cards would replace the ones that were taken, and the ant would also receive these, and now there's a different player playing this. And also, the grasshopper goes to the player to the left after every turn, and the ants only go to the left if they actually were correct that round. So the ant can be the, the ant a couple of rounds in a row if they don't get it correct. Otherwise, they're passing it to the left, and this always passes to the left. And of course, you can't be both the ant and the grasshopper at once, so with multiple players, this would just hop over the ant player. Uh, so let's give another example here. Let's say the ant player starts here, goes here, 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 and here. So which one did this player choose? This is the purple player. Let's see. Okay, and maybe uh, he picks, grasshopper thinks he picked that. Well, indeed, that is correct. The player what had played this face down, so the grasshopper will take all of the yellow cards. In this case, they're both insects, so he'll actually keep both of those, like that. And so now the purple player is going to go two up on the yellow track. And so since the grasshopper won, the ant would stay the ant. He'd pull all of his pieces back, and he would get to go again once the tracks are full, like that. This would continue until any player gets two of their cubes to the end right there, and then it would end, and then you would score up these points here. Then we look at the bonus points, and this was where the insects come in. So let's say the white player ended here with uh, 20 points, and the purple player has three, six, nine, 12, but let's say the purple player has three of the same insect. So you have three of the green guys. They would get uh, six points. So you use the score track around here to add those six points 
to the 12. And let's say they also had two of the blue ants, uh, insects there, they would get another three points. So you can add, you're trying to collect these to get bonus points along with that. And whoever has the most points at the end of that uh, is the winner. Now that's winter mode. Let's look at autumn mode. It's set up the same way. We each get four, uh, a grid of four by four there. And everybody gets a card here, a path card. They put face up in front of them to start the game. And instead of getting points uh, scored on that score track, you will earn these provision cards that are each, each worth a point. You're trying to get to four points. So to get this provision card, you need to turn in one of the blues and two of the yellows to get this and so on and so forth. So the main part of the game plays pretty much very much like uh, the autumn, the, the winter phase and the autumn phase play the same here where they would place and then the grasshopper would place. Let's say he says, I think he'd pick blue. Now with three or four players, there's also red ants. So now the players that weren't the grasshopper or the ants have something to do where they would also try to select like the grasshopper, which color uh, the ant is selecting. Now, if the grasshopper does not uh, select the same color, so let's say the ant pick that and the grasshopper is wrong, the um, red ants get to flip over the one that they chose. And any red ant that's correct gets one of these path cards to flip up in front of them. This is good because this will help them get some of these provision cards. So it gives the red ants something to do when it's not their turn as an ant or a grasshopper. So that makes it more interesting. Also, let's say, okay, so this guy took here. Now let's say, for example, it was like this. Now he had picked yellow. So he would take any of the yellow cards that the ants on, he could take this one. But in this case, um, there's something different that you can do. Let's say the let's say the board looked like this. Anytime you're taking a card that has an insect, you can take this card or you can take any other card on the board that has the same insect. So I could have gone here, bluffed blue, had him pick blue, and then I get this yellow card, but instead of this, maybe I wanted the blue one. So because I have this insect, I can take this one instead because maybe I just needed that card to finish this provision. And so once you have enough cards, you can buy these provision cards. They're worth one point a piece. You can also at any time turn in three cards that you have face up in front of you that are the same color to add to ask, act as any one other color. So you can use those wild path cards, three of any one color to, to use any of the others to get those provision cards. Also, if you get two of the same exact, same type of artwork on the provision cards, like these two, they're worth one point each. This would normally be worth two points. But if it's the same card, because it's the same, same artwork, they're actually worth an additional point. So that's three. You only need four points to win this game. And if you're able to get one of these with exact change, meaning after you pay for it, you have no more of these in front of you, you get another one of these path cards for, for good hand management to help you buy the next one. And changing players happens the same as the other mode, auto mode, and the first one to get four points here wins. Now there's actually an expert variant for the um, uh, winter mode. There's six cards, one for each of the different insects. You take those six, you shuffle them up, and you put four out in each game. Now when you collect an insect like this, you get to take this card from the middle, or if somebody else has it, you, you, can, you can take it from them. And anytime you have a card in front of you, the ability is, it's a special ability. This guy gets to look at uh, the three tokens that the ant did not select. So it gives the grasshopper some more information. This one allows you to use two of the same path cards as a wild instead of three. This guy just gives you an extra bonus point the whole time. Hey, if you have this and three other provision cards, you'll win. This guy is if you don't take um, one of the path cards, you get to take one off the top. So they give you special abilities and you're stealing them back and forth. It just gives the game even more uh, of a gamery type of uh, notion there with the winter mode. All right, there is a, a grasshopper and the ant. I've got to be honest with you, from watching and reading about this game, I wasn't terribly excited about it, but the series had been so good so far, I, I got to play all of them just to see what they're like. And I've got to say, I was thoroughly impressed with this game. I really like it a lot. I mean, what, even maybe just watching my overview, you, you may have watched this and go, huh, it's just guessing and bluffing. It doesn't seem that interesting. And that's kind of what I thought too. It's one of those games that you really have to kind of experience because you might just think it's just random bluffing. Aha, I, I guess this, you guess that, ha, I get some points. But as the game evolves, even in the easier mode, the, 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 the autumn mode there, as someone starts getting up in one of those two tracks, it gives you more things to think about. Okay, he's three quarters of the way to blue. He's got one or two blue, uh, you know, things in his train. 
Is he doing that or is he bluffing that to try to get the other insect on the other one? Because then you gotta, you gotta pay attention as to what insects they're taking because they put them face down. So you're watching that, you're trying to remember that. So based upon what they've taken, based upon where they are on the score sheet, then it gets even thicker. And it's like, okay, am I really gonna go after that or not? And it actually is very enjoyable, much more than, than, it, than it looked or appeared and very much more than I thought it was gonna be. And that's just the autumn mode. The winter mode, wow, there's a lot to think about. Just that one mechanism where when someone takes a card, if it's, if it's an insect, they can take that card or they can take any other card on the board that has that same insect. Even just that throws a big wrench into what are they doing? Uh, I see their one yellow card away from getting this. He's got a bunch, he's got a guy on a yellow card. He's probably going for it. Nope, he goes for something else. Or, oh, he's on that insect. That'll get him the yellow card. Is he gonna go there? Nope, he thought you'd find that and he went somewhere else. It's actually really good and really fun. I like how they add those red ants uh, so that the players of three and four uh, can actually have something to do on their turn. Uh, plus, you add on top of that the advanced rules with those special powers. Oof. I think this game is awesome. It's got, it's good with kids because that first very basic version is easy to play with kids or non-gamers. You add the really thinkingness and the bluffing of that, that extra thing, trying to get those, those provision cards, and then you add the advanced rules. Another great version of this Tales and Series games where you can play it with your, your older children, you can play it with family that don't necessarily play games, but you turn up all the screws, you turn in all the variants, and it's fun for gamers too. I don't know how they keep pumping out these awesome games, but they do. This is one of my favorites of the series. I, I think I still like Hot T Hair and Tortoise, my favorite, uh, but this is right up there. If you like any of these games in the series, this is a no-brainer. Don't let it kind of fool you thinking it's just a bluffing game. It's not going to be very fun. It was much more fun than I thought it was going to be. It's on par, if not better than average for this series, which is saying a lot. That's the grasshopper in the end. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.